This is me post-college, clutching an unrelated degree, battling debt, and just staring into the abyss of what's next. But here's the twist. Within three months from being absolutely clueless and not knowing exactly what I wanted to do, I became a data analyst. And the best part, I didn't have to get a computer science degree or go to a boot camp. I do want to mention though, I did take some related classes during my schooling, but let's be honest, when you graduate, you actually remember zero of it and half of it's not even practical. It's very theoretical and you can't actually apply it to the workforce. So before I broke into data analytics, I actually interned at a bank in finance. So I did a rotational program and it didn't really itch my spark for creativity. I was doing financial modeling, I was doing PowerPoint decks and going through Salesforce pulling data, but it really wasn't what I saw myself doing for the next 40 years. I kind of just went into it because it seemed like, oh, you studied business, so you should go towards finance or try to work for a bank. And that seems to be the path that a lot of people go down, but it really wasn't what I wanted to do. I also felt like I didn't have the technical skills. I'd be browsing these technology companies for their job postings and I'd be like, what does this even mean? What is a data scientist? What is a software engineer? What are these tools that they use? So I really had a big disadvantage coming from a non-technical background. I was also getting a very anxious at this point. I was like, do I want to go down the finance route? Do I see the career progression matching my ambitions and goals? And this all led to a ton of anxiety where I just did not know what I wanted to do. And I was in the state of just being clueless. I wanted something where I could be creative. And for me, that was data analysis, whether it be building dashboards, creating reports, or even talking to stakeholders. I was able to showcase my creative ability and critical thinking within my work, which was huge to me. I also felt like it provided more career mobility and flexibility in terms of what I wanted to do long-term. Like I also saw that maybe a product management may be good long-term, or maybe I want to go into data science or software engineering long-term. So I think going down this data analytics route actually opens up a lot more doors than people realize. Nowadays, I even talk to my friends who are working in investment banking and finance, and they're using SQL in their jobs too. So data analytics isn't just a job on its own. It's a field which is used upon a bunch of different other professions now. So let's take it back, back when I was completely clueless. At this point, I didn't even know what SQL was. I didn't know what Python was. And I thought all coding languages were the same. To be frank, I thought if you knew SQL, you could code up a whole app in iOS. And I just did not know the differences between any of these languages. All I knew was the texting was great, fostered innovation, and paid really well at that point. And let's get this straight, I'm not knocking finance as a career at all. Some of my best friends and classmates from school went into finance and have a long and storied career where they really enjoy what they do. I myself was just never that great at financial modeling and didn't really itch my sense of creativity like it did for my classmates and peers. So after I graduated and I was completely clueless, I actually ended up talking to one of my professors. I just cold emailed him out of the blue and I realized this class actually resonated with me and this is something I could do long term. So when I emailed him, he agreed to meet up. And bear in mind, I knew nothing about coding. I knew some basic R, but I had no idea what SQL was and no idea what Python was. And the R I did know was just Googling syntax and just figuring things out from Google. I wasn't actually a pro by any means necessary. So during this meeting, my professor completely reassured me that these skills can be completely self-taught and you don't actually have to get a degree and you don't have to go to a boot camp to learn these. And coming from my background, I was a bit skeptical to listen to him at first, but he was telling me stories of countless of students that he has had that have broken into this field from a completely unrelated degree. Because if I haven't spoken to him, I wouldn't even realize that you could actually make this switch. So that's huge. I wanna get this into all of your minds. It is totally possible to get into this profession without an unrelated degree or background. So how did I make this switch? So like I said before, my professor knew, had some students that had made this switch themselves and he actually was able to connect me with them. So I must have had 100 to 200 conversations with people in this field who have made the switch and who have just studied computer science and got into this field. Companies like Amazon or even different industries that were in data-driven roles. They all seem like they love it or so they say, who knows, maybe they like the compensation, maybe like the work life or the actual day to day. But all I got from these conversations, whether it be the good or the bad that they were telling me, I knew this is a career path I had to take. Talking to people not only gives you the inside scoop about the industry, it also opens up your network. It allows you to naturally network and these are the people you'll be reaching out to further on your career, not just in the beginning. Think about it, if they have just spoken to you and a month later they need a position filled on their team, you'll be at the top of their mind and they'll reach out to you for an open role. I do want to mention though, they'll only give you this referral if they enjoyed your conversation to do not go into these conversations unprepared. Prepare heavy, study them, and figure out what value you can provide to them as well. The second step is dive deep into stats. People think data analytics is all this fancy code, but in reality, there's a lot of statistics to it. Without proper stats, the analysis means nothing. When I first decided I had to tackle statistics from my professor, I had a near panic attack back to high school when I was taking AP stats. But once I pushed back this initial fear, I figured out the world wasn't just numbers. It was stories waiting to be pushed. 
all of this data hidden within these companies are stories, not just numbers that statistics helps bring to life. Statistics isn't just about calculating averages, p-values, and variances. It's about trying to figure out trends and telling stories to stakeholders to help make better business decisions. So I took it back to the basics. Although I did take a few classes in undergrad, I had to start from scratch in order to get past these interviews. I started off with the very, very basics from mean, max, min, median, to regressions, to probability, and eventually hypothesis testing, which is used heavily in my day-to-day -day role. For me, there are plenty of courses on Coursera that helped itch this curiosity for statistics. For me, there was a course from Stanford, Intro to Statistics, and this was huge to helping me break into this field. And remember, not only is this material helpful for your day-to-day -day job, it's also helpful for interviews. And interviews itself, it may not just be simple SQL questions or may not just be purely behavioral, but you have to understand the math as well. Imagine trying to get some information from someone who speaks a totally different languages as you. That's kind of how it's like trying to pull data from a database without knowing SQL. SQL is like that universal translator. Once you get the hang of SQL, you'll be able to talk and communicate to any database. I started with very, very simple queries such as select star and just getting the hang of how to communicate with the database. So I actually learned SQL through DataCamp and W3 Schools. They're both great resources. Another game changer for me was lead code. People don't really talk about this, but if you want to get really practical experience, lead code was huge for me. I'm not sponsored by any way, but I highly recommend using these tools. So the next step is what all the flashy hype's about, Python and R. But by now, you know, during my undergrad with this professor, I had a little bit of experience with R, limited to just Google queries and looking at syntax, but Python, I had zero experience with at this point. It was like this cool, mysterious language that people were talking about, but I just had no idea. For some people, it was game development. For some people, it was software engineering. For some people, it was data analysis or machine learning. Python was extremely versatile and very robust libraries within it. While R felt very academic and restricted in a way to more like statistics and economics, Python was this very open source environment with a bunch of different use cases to me. Both are incredible in their own right, and they're used for different cases. So I started Python by taking a course on it, and I recommend using DataCamp as well. That's what I used to learn it. But you can start off with some libraries such as Pandas for data manipulation, Scikit-learn for some ML queries, and matplotlib for some visualization. But over time, I think as you mature as a data analyst and data scientist, you realize that whether you're using SQL, R, or Python, it doesn't matter. It's more about understanding the foundations of statistics and figuring out what tool best fits your use case. Just learn one and get really good at one, whether it be R or Python. As I embarked on this journey in this step process, I was downing many cups of coffee and caffeine and countless of hours on YouTube and data camp. But every query executed correctly during my projects and work made it all worth it at the end. I remember during my first role, I had a 50 to 100 line query, something ridiculous like that. And when it ran correctly, the joy I experienced that day, I don't think I'll ever replicate again. Don't get discouraged by the daunting task of just switching your career completely and switching into a field that's may seem very new and complex to you. Break it down step by step and just put one foot in front of the other and chat tackle it. Once you're past these initial hurdles, you'll actually enjoy the process and the views are incredible from the other side. The next step is discovering the magic of visualization. And what I mean by this is learning Tableau, Looker, or any other BI solution. So after the deep dive into learning SQL, Python, or R, I was ready to actually visualize things. Remember, stakeholders aren't gonna look through your SQL query and look at the results or even your Python results. For them, it's just gibberish. Visualizing it is the ultimate way to translate to other stakeholders in the company. It was almost like painting, but with data. With Tableau, I was able to create dashboards. With Looker, I was able to create looks and put together a compelling dashboard and tell a clear cut story. So when a business decision had to come, I could put together some points and analysis and visualizations to help leaders make the right decision. I know a lot of you are gonna be surprised by this, but I totally relied on YouTube and Looker on Google's documentation guide. I learned this completely on the fly without any schooling. And to be honest, I did take one visualization class in undergrad, but I came out knowing nothing. And I also don't even think it was that helpful. In school, they give you very simple tasks and it doesn't actually relate to what you do in industry. In the real world, data is gonna be very complex and messy and you're gonna have to learn to deal with that and code the back end as well as the front end. But if there's one point I want you to get out of this, don't focus on learning as many tools as possible. Figure out one, whether you like Power BI, Tableau, or Looker, and get really, really good at one. Most companies will be very flexible with what you can use. So just master one and then the others will come. The next step is building a portfolio. 
Now that you've done all the hard work, how are you gonna show it off to future employers and your network? I got really busy here and this is where 2020 kind of hit and I was able to pull up a lot of these data sets on Kaggle and I got to work. I was using my newfound skills in Python, R, Tableau, and I was uploading these all onto GitHub eventually. And people were noticing. I put this on my resume and this was a great talking points in interviews. So not only can you talk about what you did, your employer who's interviewing you can follow along. And this helps you with branding. It's one thing to say you're an aspiring data analyst, but it's another thing if you have the work and projects to back it up. Nine times out of 10, the candidate with a portfolio is gonna get the job over someone with no portfolio who is interested in the field. Don't underestimate a portfolio. It can almost be as valuable as experience itself in this field. The next step is apply. With my newfound knowledge in these technical skills and my portfolio looking really shiny on GitHub, and LinkedIn, it was time to apply. So do you remember those connections from earlier from all those calls, the over hundred calls I did with people in the industry? Now it's time for them to be used. I hit the job market with a mix of enthusiasm and nervousness, rightfully so. Of course, there were days where the inbox was completely empty and the days where there were a lot of rejections. And let's be honest, that was most days where there were mainly rejections. But for every door closed, there is maybe not a door, but a window open somewhere else. And it's all part of the process. Fast forward a bit and I was offered a position as a junior data analyst as a, at an innovative startup. And that's okay, you don't need to land a top tier data analyst position or data scientist position straight out the gate. You need to start somewhere, you need to learn the skill. Once you get experience, this will help you step over and get to the next step in your career. So within three months from feeling completely directionless after graduating to this, this wasn't bad in my book. If there's one thing I want you to take from this video, your past and present doesn't define your future. With passion, persistence, and a little bit of networking, you will be able to land a job or role in this career. My story isn't unique at all. In fact, there are probably thousands, if not tens of thousands of people who have done this, so it's extremely replicable. I'm curious to see here your stories, and I wish you best of luck. If you had any value out of this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you.